Hello and welcome to the first Care Collab of 2023. Today's Care Collab is about the Paphiopedilum, well, slipper orchids. I'm only going to talk about Paphiopedilums because those are the only type of slipper orchids that I have. I do believe Matthew um, from Hello Plant Lovers, I believe he has three different types of um, slipper orchids. So be sure to check out his video. He will be one of the participants today. There are a total of, I believe, 20 participants in this care collab. So make sure you grab you a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, tea, get you a, a nice little snack or maybe even a meal because each of us um, have different growing environments. We have different care um, tips that we're going to provide. This is a truly international care collab. Um, there are gonna be people from the United States, from Britain, Nina in Spain, I believe uh, Nassima, uh, Fernanda Nasimato from Portugal, um, Matthew is in Melbourne, no, yes, Matthew is in Melbourne, Australia. You've got Sharon Carpenter with Joyous Orchids. Um, you've got Simply Orchids, etc. I believe she's in California. I'm here in Colorado. So there, there are many, many, many different growing environments, many different temperatures, many different climates. You should be able to pick up something that can help you with your orchid, specifically the slipper in this case. And before we start talking about my little small collection here, if you do videos, it does not matter what platform, if you do videos and you would like to join a Care Collab, you can reach out to Nina from Ninja's Orchids who initiated the Care Collab initiative back in, I believe it was 2020. Um, anyone is invited. You do not have to be an expert grower. You can be a novice. You could have just bought your Patio Pedalum and had it for a few weeks and figured out some things and you want to share it does not matter you could have been growing for 40 years have information to share doesn't matter let us know and next time we do a slipper orchid or any orchid that you see in any of the past care collabs if you have something you want to do a care collab reach out let us know we'll join you if we have that orchid that aside this beauty here look at her. Now this is the Paphiopedilum Mel Star. Let me just do this. Let's see if we can kind of shade some of it. I just think she looks fabulous. Look at her yellow. Like she is sunshine yellow. You know when you were a kid and you would color pictures and you would make the sun and you would get that bright yellow crayon? Oh my gosh, it is so much like that. Now I, this is my first one. I purchased her in February of 2021, and she was in bloom when I purchased her. It is April of 2023, and she is just now producing this bloom. So I'm thinking that she may be a biannual bloomer, or it just took her a while to get accustomed to my environment. So my environment is I'm a home grower. I grow primarily here in my living room. I have an east facing window behind me. I do have another bedroom that I've kind of commandeered for overflow that has a southwest facing window. And that is where she grew last growing season. Now she is a solid green. Now these are generally known as multi-floral, but that can be misleading sometimes. 99% of the time your multi-florals give what it sounds multi blooms this one however only produce one bloom now she does have several growths so she's got this fan and that is what is known as a new growth it is not a baby the rhizome on a paphiopedilum is very very small so very compact so it looks like it might be a cakey but it's actually just the, the next growth and generally one fan will produce the next. Sometimes you can get lucky like I did and she produced a fan over here as well as a fan over here. And I have one, two, three fans that are currently growing. Now this one back here, uh-oh, uh they want to join hands. No, 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 no. So this one back here, this one here, this is probably not going to do anything else and that's fine she can absorb it the 
original fan that I purchased her with, she did have this and two more growing, um, has recently been cut off. So I've recently repotted her into, what did I repot her in? This is just all small bark, like almost like seedling bark with some pumice stones, small pumice stones, and some medium bark to kind of extra aeration because these like to stay moist, as the books say. And many people will tell you, you cannot let these ladies dry out. But we're going to talk about that in a minute. So I repotted her back in August of 2022 into this media. Before that, she was in a moss and bark mixture, which she did well in, but I felt like she was staying too wet because when I did take her out of the pot to repot, she did have a few soggy roots. Speaking of their roots, their roots are brown, so you really do have to fill them unless they're like solid black and kind of slimy looking, obviously dead. You do actually have to fill them to see if they're still alive. And they're fuzzy. Oh my goodness, they're fuzzy. I'm sure someone is going to show you the roots in this Caraco Lab. But this one is the one that kind of led me down the road. So in October of 2022, I decided, well, I've had this one for over a year and it's still alive, it hasn't bloomed yet. I'm cool with that, but it's alive. So I bought this lady here, I believe this one is the October one. Yes, in October of 2021. So let's just move Miss Melhel back here for a minute because we're going to talk about her again in a, a few. But when she came, she did come in bloom. And this here is her, the first re-blooming for me on her. And I'll tell you in a minute what she is. But isn't she gorgeous? Look at that. And look at the spike on this one. So I didn't have her staked initially, but then it just kept going and I didn't want it to break. So I did just lightly attach a little strap to kind of hold that spike up. But this is the growth right here. You see this leaf and that leaf, whoops, that leaf right there. Those are the ones that came off of what I purchased her with. And this one had just begun. So you could just see the beginning of the new growth. Look at the leaves on this bad girl. Look how much longer this bottom leaf is than this bottom leaf that was grown in the nursery. And these right here that are nice, big, and strappy. I'm pretty proud of this, guys, because to me, this is kind of a success. So how do I water them? So what I do is I set them in a bowl of water. I don't pour from the top because I'm very, very paranoid about getting any water in the crown because much like our um, Phalaenopsis, if you get water in their crown, they can go downhill, lose their leaves, and go on with the orchid fairies to heaven. But this one is in a moss and small bark mixture, which is what the male hell was in. And this one is literally, I'm going to say bone dry because she is very light. Like she's more top heavy than she is bottom heavy. And that's what I do. I let my pathiopetalums dry out or practically dry out. Sometimes I do catch them before they dry out. But during my surgery, they had to dry out. I did not have the ability, the wherewithal, or the want to make sure that they stayed damp. And they did fine. So my environment, though, is very controlled. Um, they do not grow under grow lights. Uh, they grow under natural lighting, whether it is in the southwest facing window. This year, I am growing them in front of the east facing window, just because this way I can have them all together, whereas before they were kind of scattered around the house. But none of them have grown under grow lights. I do use grow lights, as you can tell with the shelving, but not on everything. Fertilizer, I... I'm lazy when it comes to fertilizer for these girls because I water these separate because um, they don't fall into any kind of like routine that I have. Like all my fowls pretty much dry out at the same time as far as what size pots they're in. These girls here just kind of depends. So I'm rather lazy with the fertilizer. So they probably only get far fertilizer twice a month, if that. And when I do fertilize them though, they get anywhere from 100 to 150 parts per million of 
um, soluble fertilizer. And then I will occasionally give them a soak in CalMag because they do like their calcium and magnesium. But again, I'm lazy with that. I'm sure if I was more consistent, I probably would have gotten even bigger leaves off of this lady. And she may have bloomed sooner. Who knows? <clears throat> but, so this was October. So then I'm at Nick's Nursery, a local garden center here in Colorado. And November, I decide, ooh, look, I like these. And if you've noticed, we have modeling here. We also have modeling on this one, but it's much different. And, oh, I forgot to tell you what this one was, didn't I? That was in bloom, sorry. So this one is the Pepheopedilum Shun Yi Heart right here. And this one that, let me go back. This one here, which was in bloom for me, or was it this? No, it was a spring pleasure. So um, the Pathiopedilum um, Hung Shing Red Apple has not rebloomed for me yet. If I can find the pictures um, of when they were in bloom, I'll post them, but I did have to restore my computer. So some of the stuff got lost. I may not have them if I do. Um, and I'll also link the video down below um, of, the pre of the care collab we did on Pathiopedilums about a year ago. Anyway, so this one, this is what she came to me, these growths down here. So there was a fan here. This fan, again, had just started. And as you can see, they're very slow growers because I got this in October of 2021, or November of 2021. It is now April of 2023. So they don't grow fast. So these, these, if you have patience, these are your thing. If you don't have patience, get you some other orchids to distract you. But this new growth is also much bigger, in my humble opinion, than the growth that I purchased her with. And again, she is also in a bark and moss mixture. Now she's not as dry. I can feel a little bit of weight on her. So she, they're all getting water today, guys. Don't worry. <clears throat> now I am going to repot both of these girls um, later this month, maybe even today after this video simply because they don't sit in decorative pots anymore. They used to, but they stayed wet too long. And I was afraid that was kind of not healthy for the roots. So now they stay out and with the moss getting green, uh, I don't like that. So I'm gonna repot them into, I have some black pots I wanna put them in, or I will just put them in small bark and pumice and like the male hell. And then we have, Miss Pathiopedilum Macrobay Pops here. Again, let me move the tag so you can see. So she had this growth here, and then this one here, which had the bloom, and it did rebloom for me. And then we have this growth here, this new fan here, that is really, this one grows the fastest out of all five of them. This one here. Now let's go back to the two that have blooms. And the lighting, like I said, they get right now, this year they're getting it from an east facing window. Last year, they were all in a southwest facing window. However, the Mel Hell and the, this one I believe, yeah, the Spring Pleasure were the only ones who were sitting on the top shelf where they were getting the most light. The rest of them were on the the second shelf with no supplemental lighting. So they were just getting that dappled lighting throughout the day. Now, um, humidity wise, I have very low humidity in my home. 99% of 99999 things that you read on the internet and books, um, a lot of people will tell you, you know, this orchid requires X amount of humidity or it's not gonna do well. That orchid requires 80 to 100% for it not to do well. Will they do better? with higher humidity if that is what they would get in their natural environment, obviously, but we grow hybrids. We don't grow a lot of species. And I know there are species, I know there are some of us who are growing the species, but we're, I'm just talking about hybrids today. Hybrids are bred for vigor, for blooms, for people to buy them and, and take care of them and, and get hooked on them and develop an addiction. 
So my average humidity in my home is probably 30%. Um, during the growing season, um, spring to summer, where 99% of the time I have my windows open, my average humidity in my home is probably 8 to 12%, depending on what's going on outside. Today, windows are closed because even though it's spring on the calendar, it's winter here in Denver, Colorado. The high is going to be about 58. Had light snow last night, so it is what it is. If it's raining outside, humidity in my home is higher. If we're cooking, humidity is higher, but like I said, on average, 8 to 12. So don't worry too much about the humidity unless you buy a species, and then you have to be a little more specific. Um, as far as temperature, these ladies here are very much like your Phalaenopsis in that if you're comfortable, they're going to be fine. So they will tolerate home conditions. Now there are minimums that they can take if you grow them outside and of course maximums. So depending on which pedulum you have, you may want to look at, see if there's any care as far as temperature on that particular one. If it's not for that particular one, find out what the parents are. You can do that at orchidroots.com if you have a hybrid, um, orchidspecies.com if you have a species. And generally they can tell you the parents, then you can look up the parents and kind of get a feel of, of what that goes and then kind of mimic that. Um, I do not grow any of these outside. I do grow some outside, but I don't grow any of these outside. And I think that is probably everything that I can tell you about them. One more thing, I did mention I was going to repot these ladies, <clears throat> and ideally, as with any orchid, not just certain orchids, but any orchid, new roots are usually the best time to repot. However, I don't find that true with my environment for Pathiopedlums, because like I said, it's very controlled. So this lady here, my male star, had not quite started her bud yet, but I repotted her and there were no new roots showing. So I just repotted her and she did fine, didn't, didn't skip a beat. Matter of fact, after I repotted her, and I don't know if there's any correlation to it, so this is just kind of an old wives tale, but with the fresh media, she ended up producing a bud. So this is what a bud leaf looks like. Do you see it's got some texture to it? Maybe you can't see it. Let me move that one. There you go. It's got some texture to it and it's kind of a whole different shape than what a regular leaf would look like. Let me, uh, here we go. Like right here, you can kind of see that little leaf kind of poking out. It's very pointy. Whereas that one kind of comes out, it starts off pointy, but then there's a roundness to it. And this lovely lady started her spike after this one. This one here was still in bud, hadn't even opened it yet by the time she was open. So in my experience, these grow much faster. So the multifloral, or I'll call it the solid green, strappy paphiopedlums, in my experience, grow much quicker than your mottled leaf ones. And then with the modeled leaf ones, I find that the lighter the leaves are, do you see the difference in the, in the leaves there? Like this one is so much darker than this one. They have the same amount of modeling on them, but I find that the modeled leaf ones that have the lighter modeling on it, as opposed to the dark leaf modeling, grows much quicker. And like these two here, so these three all have lighter modeling on them as opposed to this darker one. Or this one could just be a weak one. I don't know because the leaves on here are pretty similar as well. So let me know in the comments below what your experiences is if you have the green strappy or if you have the model leaf ones. And if you have the model leaf ones, you know variations of the darkness of the leaf as far as the green portion. Do you find the lighter grow much quicker or do you find they all grow the same? Because like I said, this one could just be a weak one or it could just be it really needs a repot. Another thing, um, I purposely didn't water this one to make sure that I could show you guys this. So very much like our 
Pathia, not Pathiopedilums, are Phalaenopsis. Do you see how floppy this leaf is? I should not be able to do this, okay? There should be some resistance. It, this one definitely needs some water, okay? Definitely needs some water. And with that, I hope you guys enjoy everyone's videos. Leave your comments below if you have any questions. Be sure to go check out everyone else's videos. I will link them down in the description below. I will also post all of the participants once again for you guys. Enjoy your meal and whatever beverage you decide to partake in. Have a beautiful day. Sorry about Loki saying bye.